Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Amber. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Night World series by LJ Smith. For anyone who is unaware, LJ Smith is the original author of the Vampire Diary series, which is technically more popular than the Night World series, however Night World does have quite a cult following of its own. The Night World is about a secret society of vampires, werewolves, witches, and shapeshifters who have incredibly strict rules on how they live and interact with the human world to avoid getting caught, and a lot of creatures who tend to break those rules. While you can buy the book series individually, it is generally published as three volumes, each volume having three separate books of its own. However, all of the books are related to each other in some small way. It's different than a typical series because it's not the same main characters all the way through. It's they're each individual separate stories with at least one linking character. So like, you know, in one book, we'll have a mention of a character who is from the first book and, you know, such and such like that, whereas everyone is related somehow in every way, but we don't see everyone come together until way later in the series. Today, I'm specifically going to be talking about Night World Volume 1, which includes the book Secret Vampire, Daughters of Darkness, and Spellbinder. An important thing to remember while reading the series are the main rules of the Night World. While they have many, you know, guidelines and restrictions, the two main rules are 1. Never reveal the existence of the Night World to a human, and 2. Never fall in love with a human. The punishment for breaking either rule is the death of both involved parties. Another important thing to keep in mind while reading the books is the soulmate concept. When two people are undeniably bound together for all of eternity whether they like it or not. <laughs> it is a concept that is known of in the night world, but it is more old magic and hasn't been, you know, really prevalent in the more modern years until now. Secret Vampire is about high school student Poppy, who is incredibly excited to spend her summer with her best friend and secret crush James until she finds out that she has an incredibly lethal late stage of cancer and only has a few weeks left to live. James is utterly heartbroken over the news and risks everything to give Poppy a second chance at life. He reveals his place in the night world as being a vampire and starts the process of turning Poppy into one as well so she can have hope of surviving the cancer. However, while doing so, James breaks some major night world laws. The process is also interrupted by Poppy's brother, who is understandably having a hard time coming to terms with the whole vampire thing, as well as James's cousin Ash, a known troublemaker who cares little about anyone else. The following story, Daughters of Darkness, is about Ash's three sisters, Rowan, Kestrel, and Jade, who run away to go live with their estranged Aunt Opal in the middle of nowhere in the country, only to find her dead on arrival. Instead of turning back, the girls decide to try and hide the death, which becomes increasingly difficult when their neighbor, Mary Lynette, is convinced that they murdered the aunt and is trying to get away with it. Mary Lynette's mission to discover the truth, however, is temporarily thwarted by the arrival of Ash, where the two of them have a surprising effect on each other. This isn't enough to stop her, however, and Mary Lynette and her brother discover the girls burying their aunt in the middle of the forest, as well as feeding off of a deer, forcing them to create a blood bond as opposed to the vampires killing the two siblings. Now bonded for life, the two families have to band together to discover who really murdered the aunt and wants them gone. The final novel of the volume, Spellbinder, follows two witch sisters, Thea and Blaze, after briefly meeting them as Ash and James's cousins in Secret Vampire. Expelled again, the sisters have to start out at a new school where Thea attempts to keep Blaze out of trouble. She is, after all, the reason for all of their previous expulsions. While doing so, Thea falls for a human boy, Eric, and has to pretend to be indifferent towards him to keep him protected from Blaze, whose specialty is destroying the spirits of human boys. But surprisingly, Eric doesn't seem to have any interest in Blaze, which is a first for her. He only has eyes for Thea. When Blair finds out that Thea feels the same way about Eric, she makes it her mission to kill him, to protect her sister despite the pain that it would cause. In Thea's quest to protect Eric, she uses a forbidden spell and accidentally sets loose the spirit of a long dead witch who kills a classmate and they must find a way to send her back for good. So now that we have the summaries of the books out of the way, we can actually talk about my opinion of the books. 
I personally do really enjoy the series, even though admittedly it is a little juvenile. It is definitely like a young adult series, and depending on how advanced you are, it could even lean more towards middle grade if you are like a really high level middle school reader. But I definitely think like the target audience is more young adult, high school age. I am out of high school, I am reading these and really genuinely enjoying them still, which is ironic because I personally got uh, the three volumes of the series from uh, somebody giving away a bunch of different books and I decided for shits and giggles to go ahead and give them a read because I actually had the first volume of the series before when I was about in middle school. I had, you know, tried reading the first book in the past and didn't really find it that particularly engaging. So I ended up passing the novel along and haven't thought about it that much except that I see it fairly often in like different uh, used bookstores. There always seems to be like these books around somewhere whether it's on somebody's shelf randomly or like in a store and I've been curious to read them again but not enough to where I purchased it again because I had had it in the past and was like mm, not a fan but um, I was gifted the three volumes of this series and so I decided to give it another go and I am really really enjoying it this time around. So I don't know if maybe I was just too young the first time reading it that I wasn't really understanding it or if maybe you know just my reading tastes have changed. I have you know over the years become more open to different types of books as whereas I used to think that young adult was like very cheesy and kind of lame. I am now more open to the idea of reading them with the expansion of all the different types of stories being told. So that could be a factor in it. You know, it is nice. It's uh, fantasy, but like modern fan modern fantasy. The books were originally published in the mid to late 90s. So they have somewhat dated out but not enough to where it's unrelatable. Like pretty much the only kind of noticeable difference is a lack of like internet and cell phones and that type of thing. But you don't even really notice it while you're reading. It's just like if I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, you know, what would be ch like if they were to re- write the series, what would be changed to make it more modern? And honestly, not that much because the at the core, the books are about the relationships between all of the people, whether it be romantic, friendship, enemies, or otherwise. The writing itself is, you know, definitely adequate. Um, it's you know, it's young adult. I mean, most of us at this point kind of know young adult books aren't the heights of like literature excellence, but they're definitely like nice to read if they're written by a decent author, which I feel like LJ Smith is, at least was at this point in time. I haven't personally read any of the Vampire Diaries novels, so I don't know how good those are. But even so, only the earlier volumes of those were written by LJ Smith. All of the ones that have come out in recent years were written by ghost writers. But yeah, so it is fantasy because it does involve primarily the use of vampires as well as witches and werewolves. The series does say like on all of the no uh, volumes at the time of filming this particular video, I am on volume three. Um, and in all of them on the back in like the little summary blurbs, it mentions shapeshifters being part of the night world. But out of the seven books I've read so far, we haven't seen a shapeshifter just yet. So I don't know if maybe they're kind of saving those for like the last book and it's going to be some, you know, plot twist or something. But I haven't seen any shapeshifters so far. So yeah, it's a nice use of fantasy in some young adult, uh, somewhat romancy books. There is a lot of romance that goes on in the books due to the soulmate principle but not in a way to where it's like cheesy or necessarily the main focus of the plot. Whereas a lot of young adult novels, like the only focus of the plot is romance. And it's kind of like, dude, come up with some new ideas. I do feel as though there are some nice, you know, fresh and original ideas when it does come to the fantasy concept, because it's not like we haven't seen, you know, the vampire trope and the witch trope and the whole magical secret world thing done before. 
but there are enough new concepts to where I don't feel like I'm just reading more recycled material like a lot of other books these days feel like. So I would say if this sounds interesting to you at all definitely go ahead and give it a go because I am personally really enjoying the series and I'm actually binge reading it at the moment without reading anything else which is very unusual for me because usually I'll have like a couple of different things that I'm reading going on so that way when I get sick of one thing I can switch over to another and not just completely forget about the book like I'll just take a break for a little while and then come back to it whereas with these I've just been reading them straight through one after another without anything else intermixed and so so far I haven't been bored yet and I'm not you know sick of the series I'm getting through it really quickly so I will probably have all three of my videos on the series uh, out to you pretty quickly but anyways thank you guys so so much for watching I had a blast hanging out with y'all peace